Hi everybody, we're back. This time we're going to take a look at music from a special world to me. And based on YouTube comments, I definitely think the soundtrack from this world struck uh, a note with a lot of people. Pardon the pun. This is a track from Azteca. This world was largely influenced by a lot of South American cultures, Aztecs, Mayans, Incans. And I feel that the music from this world was particularly effective. I had a lot of fun writing it, specifically with writing kind of beautiful melodies, but have them also uh, hinting at a greater sadness. This track here is the Zoltan remix. The developers did give me some notes. A haunting yet beautiful quality. The environments are lush and have a mystical greenish hue to them. Most of the architecture is built from the environment, which is the trees. As we do want to reflect that beauty, we will still need the sense of sadness and reflection as an undertone throughout. So I got to work researching the music of South America, Aztecs in particular, and what's uh, known of their musical history. I found out uh, drums were very popular, kind of big log drums. They also had some skin drums. Uh, also rattles were very, very popular, filled with sand or pebbles. So I included a lot of uh, shakers and other, other kind of rattle-like instruments. Also flutes and, and airy pipes. All right, so let's get right to it. This is the Zoltan track from Azteca. Ordinarily, I'd say there's loop. Uh, in this case, I actually wanted to give this track a final ending, so I just ended it there. Probably what I would consider a more pared down arrangement than tracks that I normally write for Wizard 101. I wanted it to be kind of a more simpler culture, but kind of a beauty in, in this simplicity uh, idea. But there's plenty of ornamentation going on, as was requested in the original design doc that I got. I've got some rain stick in here, rain sticks, a long hollowed out piece of wood that, you know, you turn upright and there's a bunch of small pebbles or other uh, hard things inside it that kind of travel down. And there, there's usually like a spiral track inside it that kind of makes it so that the, the little noisemakers inside are rolling for a very long time. Uh, it sounds like this. And obviously supposed to be evocative of rain. So I know I wanted to use some more ethnic sounding flutes, flutes made of wood or clay uh, and, and whistles. This is from 8DO. It's called the uh, Overtone Flute. It's a wooden flute played in a overblown sound, more of an overblown style. Kind of some more wild textures, I guess. And then this ocarina is from Embertone. This is the Amaya. Ocarina. 
which is a really gorgeous sounding instrument. There's a... There's a couple places where the legato between notes is a little synthetic, but not enough to bother me in these kind of things. I probably did spend some time, you know, smoothing it out as much as I could. The ocarina also has a lot of capability for uh, ornamentation. Like right here, this run. Do, do. Uh, all of those little uh, elements, I think, just adds the humanity to it. And it, it was really important to me that this piece sound very human, very possible for an ensemble to play. Uh, shakers and rattles were a big deal. So I pulled up two shaker instruments. They're actually the same shaker patch. But you can see I pan one hard left and one hard right. There's actually a few different shakers that are in the in the library. So here's the left side shaker and here's the right side shaker so i used some different sounds and recorded it twice just to try and thicken it up and make it sound like a lot more players were playing there and then bad as up here are a skin drum kind of look like an hourglass and they are originally African. I think they were discovered in Cuba later on. This is all coming in after the, uh, the sub booms instrument up here. So really simple groove in three. Uh, I have some, this is kind of like a cinematic Tom's library. They add some extra impact. The shakers change their patterns there. It's also an instrument called a kidi. I believe this is also uh, an African originating instrument. Another kind of mysterious ornamentation in there for the beginning. The beginning starts very mystical. I have uh, two pads down here. This is actually an instrument called absinthe. Uh, by Native Instruments. Some really cool uh, evolving textural pads. This one's called Another World. Uh, when I'm looking for sounds, I, you know, I have probably tens of thousands of sounds. I can't uh, I have favorites that I can kind of go to, but it is very hard to, you know, know exactly what I'm looking for when I'm, when I'm looking for it. So sometimes I'll find the name of a patch that I'm like, oh, that sounds like something that's evocative of what I'm trying to do and, and dial it in. And, and most of the time it doesn't work, but, but other times it, it does work really well. So this is a nice pad that sort of evolves. It's got a lot of different things going on. Different layers that come in and out as the mod wheel moves around. So right here. And that little kind of spinning pulsar kind of sound. When I discovered that, I, I knew I wanted to, <laughs> to use this sound. And then another layer on top of that because there wasn't a whole lot of low end to that. Uh, I found this bass flow pad, just coming from uh, Heaviosity Evolve library. I don't know if I've mentioned this library. It does a lot of things really well. It It's sort of less of a uh, real sounds and more kind of constructed sounds. And there's some synthetic stuff that still sounds a little bit organic. And then this library is a lot of fun. This is uh, from a series of libraries called Forgotten Voices. And this is also from 8DO. And this particular library is uh, called Francesca, which is the name of the artist who is singing it. it does a lot of cool and epic kind of wordless vocal uh, phrases. And kind of drenched her in reverb. A lot of the stuff at the beginning is drenched in reverb. The overtone flute, uh, her voice, the ocarinas. This is inside contact. I, I also apply 
general reverbs to the you know a whole instance of contact but here you can see i have added some uh, a lot of aux end on those three parts to make them sound a little further away there's a, a voice calling to you from a distance so we establish the mystery at the beginning we get that ocarina to to come out and start to give you, us an idea of the tonalities here So in this melody here, we have an opening of three notes, and then we have an answering call of three notes that kind of expands, that expands the tonality here. So our first three notes here are just E, C, and D. Probably the first three notes you ever played on piano, right? Very simple, but it's still a little vague because we don't know what key we're in yet. It could be in C. But if the root was A, you know, we could also be in A minor. All right, so still a little vague. Then the next line here clarifies. All right, okay, now with that F sharp, we're probably not in the key of A, although we still could be. And then the top note and the note that we start on keeps climbing up here, right? we end up kind of showing that all of these notes were sort of in the key of G. And it was important that all this stuff be really soft and round. Uh, and then I had the brass echoing that. But still in the very warm part of the brass. Uh, and then to warm it out a little bit more, I have this patch. It's uh, Cine Sample, Cine Brass, Bass Trombones, and Tuba playing bass notes in there. So this is the, the chords by themselves. And then add the warmth. Uh, and then pulled my old trick of having the top note, the melody part, being played by a different sound just to try and... Uh, give it some added weight. And then after all that warmth, I'm going to kind of focus it a little bit, little bit more. The strings come back in and the violin solo sound. So it's the same thing. These, this string part has the melody in it, but by putting a solo sound on top of it, you're kind of adding a quality and adding, adding a more expressive quality. So these are the strings by themselves. And here it is with the violin solo on top of it. I, I knew that I wanted to use voices. I probably tried to use, you know, choir voices doing this. They're, it's just Oz. So here's my vocal stack. I just sang this over and over again and uh, found the harmony one piece at a time. So this is more of my uh, studio trickery and mixing my voice down so far that you can't even really hear it. Uh, there's a lot of problems with these parts. I, as tempting as it is to, to fix everything, uh, there's, there's a certain part where it's just the inaccuracies help bring it bring it to life so it's good because i am inaccurate and then i would have done both parts twice and pan them a little, little differently So, sounds terrible by itself. Fortunately, people's vocals were not intended to be heard without reverb, I think. So this is deep, deep in the reverb. And it's supported by a lot of other patches here. So spoiler alert, uh, how, how many years has Azteca been out? All right, how to handle the spoiler. I'm not told many things before they happen, but I was told of 
Azteca was going to be. And that was always present on my mind as I was writing this stuff that it was going to kind of be ruined. And so this piece in particular, I was kind of trying to foreshadow that. It just kind of builds up and then in one second, everything just kind of goes away. <laughs> See these strings just kind of building up, building up. And then those voices just kind of disappearing. And it's not really a bang, it's a whimper, you know. So I, I think this is an example of metaphorically foreshadowing something that's going to go on in the narrative. It's not literal, right? It's not like I'm saying what's going to happen, but it's it's definitely something that when you realize where it's going, you come back and kind of figure out the importance of, of something like this. So this was a little different for me from have, for having all of these vocal tracks do this. It's a It was a really weird exercise. I wasn't entirely sure if it was gonna work when I started. I just kind of picked some notes that were in the chord. And then they just, one at a time, build. And right there, that was the fun. These are the fun two notes to do. So on a minor chord, that's the ninth and the minor third, which are right next to each other, semi tune apart, uh, and definitely give a lot of conflict. While these notes are setting the stage for it, just kind of the low, something's coming, this is just a fifth. And then right there you start to get the, oh, something bad's about to happen. And wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, keep going. So this piece definitely had had it all uh had the the pretty pretty parts simple parts but i was trying to bring a lot of the conflict and, and tension in the orchestration and in some of the harmony and in the overall kind of direction of the piece hope you like that tune this is one of my favorites from the game and definitely a world that i feel like everything kind of came together and delivered a really kind of cohesive vision of of who the culture was who the people were what the land is about what the world is about all right so we are approaching the end of the musical tour of the spiral so because azteca was such a favorite i was thinking about doing another uh track from from this world so if you wouldn't mind uh commenting below and tell me if there's another track from this world from azteca that you'd like to hear specifically and maybe we can double up on this one before we're done and a quick plug if you're just following this uh playlist for wizard 101 there's another game i wrote for a long time ago called vex and i'm doing a series of videos for that as well thanks everybody see you in a bit